One of the unforeseen side effects of the pandemic and the subsequent lockdown is that a large number of people started woodworking. So with that in mind, I'm going to cover what you need to get started, as well as give a little bit of detail on the more advanced woodworking tools and accessories. The first and most important thing is, of course, safety. Protect your eyes with safety glasses, cover your ears with some earmuffs, or perhaps some noise-canceling headphones so you can listen to music or audiobooks while you work. And finally, a good dust mask. The fine particles created in the workshop can be harmful to your lungs. Now that we're safe in the shop, there are some basics that every woodworker will need, like a good tape measure. One like this has the basic measurements on it, or you can get one like this with a little more detail. But I prefer one like this, that way I'm not counting the lines to figure out where 3 eighths of an inch is. Woodworkers don't use a lot of nails. Usually, glue is used to hold things together. That's why I buy the big one gallon jugs of glue. It's cheaper in the long run, and you won't run out as often. I pour the glue into this little dispenser, and that helps keep it from drying out. You'll also need some clamps to hold things together while the glue dries. A woodworker can never have enough clamps, but you gotta start somewhere. So a couple of bar clamps and a couple of F-style clamps should get you going for now. Even for the most basic projects, you'll need some sort of square. You can get these pretty cheap, but as with many things, you get what you pay for. The combination square is great for the shop, but a cheap one won't be as accurate. If you're not sure if it's a good one, feel the weight of it in your hand. The cheap ones are very light, and a good one has some heft to it. Now for some power tools. When buying new tools that use batteries, consider sticking with one brand so you can swap batteries between the tools and you'll have fewer chargers to plug in. Everyone needs at least a drill, like this one. With this, you can drill holes and add or remove screws. The drill is really good at drilling holes, but it's not the best tool for fasteners. If you're going to be putting in a lot of screws, and as a woodworker you will be, then you may want to get one of these. This is an impact driver, and it does a much better job of driving home a screw. The drill has a keyless chuck that can adjust to fit various drill bits and driver bits as well. But the impact driver can only use bits with a quarter inch hex head. If you do get yourself an impact driver, then be sure to get a kit like this one that has all the impact driver ready bits you're likely to need. Why is an impact driver better? Well, the drill has a tendency to hop out of the screw head when things get tough. But the impact driver starts to hammer when it feels resistance and this keeps the bit from hopping out of the screw head. I've used Robertson head screws for this demonstration, but the same issue is present with Phillips head screws as well. And don't even bother with flat head screws. Those are next to impossible to put in with either of these tools. The drill and the impact driver will be some of the most commonly used tools in your shop, right up there with the circular saw. Every shop needs one of these. You can do a lot with a circular saw, but it really helps to have some sort of straight edge to make good square and true cuts. With a decent straight edge and enough time, you can make almost any cut that you might do with a table saw. So if you're on a budget, then you can probably make do with just a circular saw and a guide for now, and buy a table saw later. That's why I have the table saw listed in the more advanced tool section. The circular saw has the straight cuts covered, but what if we want to do some curves or make smaller precise cuts, then we're going to need a jigsaw. This is one of the essential tools for a shop, though they do require some skill to use well. There's a bit of an art to using a jigsaw, and I'm no artist. I use the jigsaw a lot, but I still find it challenging to get good clean cuts right on the line. When those cuts are less than clean, you'll have to do some sanding. It can be done by hand, but that'll take a lot of time. So a good sander is one of the most important tools to have in your shop and preferably something with good dust collection. You can get a basic palm sander like this one and it'll do the job. Or you can get a random orbital sander and it'll do the job better. A random orbital sander is less likely to leave those little swirly scratches on your project. The sander does make a lot of dust and all these power tools make a lot of dust. So a shop vac is a must. You'll need something to keep the shop clean and a small shop vac will do the job for now. The difference between the beginner tools and the advanced tools is your time. You can make a lot of great projects with only the tools and supplies from the beginner's list. But you can make those same projects and more faster and more accurate with some more advanced tools. Some might argue that the miter saw should be in with the beginner's list of tools. 
and perhaps it should. But I put it in the advanced list because with a square and a straight edge, you can use the circular saw in many situations where you might use a miter saw. The miter saw is going to be a lot more accurate than the circular saw when making angled cuts, so it's worth it to have one. These can be quite expensive, but there are also some more economical versions that'll do the job well for a lot less money. The table saw is the heart of the shop. You'll hear a lot of people say that, and it's true. Once you have a table saw, you may find you use it more than most other tools in the shop. When you're just starting out, you can get by with a job site saw. Maybe someday you might want to get one of those big expensive cabinet saws, but for now, the job site saw is much more affordable and does a pretty decent job for the money. Another very handy machine to have is the palm router, or trim router. It's great for rounding over edges or trimming one board flush with another. Eventually you may find that you want to drill a hole that is perfectly perpendicular to the face of your board. Doing that freehand with your drill is rarely going to give you the results you're looking for. So now you need a drill press. A small benchtop model is all that most people will need. But some may find that a floor model is needed. The benchtop is usually much cheaper, so stick with those if you can. If you want to make cutting boards or you want to make any boards thinner than they were, you'll need a planer. This is definitely not the cheapest tool on the list, but I think they are a must-have for an advanced shop. A good percentage of your time in the shop is going to be sanding, and if you do it all with a palm sander or a random orbital sander, then you're going to spend a large percentage of your time in the shop at the sander. The belt sander is a great way to reduce the time spent sanding. You can remove a lot of material fast, and if you get the combination belt sander with oscillating sander like this one, then you'll be able to sand all the little nooks and crannies on your projects. I call this pro level, but you don't have to be a professional to have these tools. These are just some of the more expensive shop tools that you may only want to invest in if you've been woodworking for a while, and you're sure that they'll be worth the money for you. The palm router can do a lot for you, but the router table can do a lot more. They can be pretty expensive, so not everyone who has a shop will get one of these. Your jigsaw can take care of many of the curved cuts, but a bandsaw is much faster, more accurate, and you can use it to resaw boards as well. The jointer is a big and expensive tool, but it may actually have the potential to save you enough money to justify buying one. If you buy lumber from a big box store and it's finished on all four sides, then you're paying a premium for the labor it takes to surface the board. If you own a jointer, you can buy rough cut lumber and surface the four sides yourself. Rough cut lumber is usually going to be a fair bit cheaper than the surfaced on four sides stuff will be. I don't have a jointer yet, but hopefully someday I'll get one. I don't have a drum sander either but I'd like to add one to the shop someday. They're a bit of a luxury item in a shop, but they are a big time saver when you have lots of surfaces to sand flat, and they're great for sanding boards to a specified thickness. Many woodworkers these days are adding CNC machines to their shops. Others may say that it might not be true woodworking, but I say if you're working with wood, then it's woodworking. I have an entry level CNC and it's a lot of fun to use. There's no end to what you can make with one of these, and if you combine it with all the other tools mentioned above, then you can probably make just about anything that you can think of. Woodworking is great fun, and if you want to join the club but your budget is tight, a lot of the tools mentioned can be found at garage sales, online marketplaces, or auctions for a lot less than they'll cost you in a retail shop. Click here to see some of the things I made in my shop.